Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. At 34, Joseph Cingolini was reportedly the underboss of the Philadelphia mob investigators say is now run by John Stampa. Cingolini is the son of imprisoned mobster Joseph Chicky Cingolini. Both father and son were part of Nicky Scarfo's crime family. The Pennsylvania Crime Commission says Stampa runs a much different organization than Scarfo and newer, younger members don't like it. I, I think what you're seeing is there, there's an attempt at least to reconcile the old world and the new world. And I think what you're seeing is there's tremendous turmoil within the family as Stampa tries to impose some of the old world rules and values on the newer people. In the past two months, law enforcers say there have been four suspected mob hits in this area, including the murder of a man from California, Rod Colombo. The others, Mario Riccobini, killed because authorities believe he turned mob informant. Louis Capello, a former Scarpa soldier, was shot to death in Delaware County. And today, Joey Cingolini. And sources say there was also an attempted mob hit at a restaurant here on Delaware Avenue. Those sources say back on December 30th, mobsters tried to kill a cook who was reportedly dating John Stampa's daughter. Those sources also say that the shotgun used apparently misfired. Ironically, Cingolini's brother Michael survived a botched murder attempt outside his home one year ago tomorrow. Investigators predict a future of more calculated, well-planned murder attempts. They say those attempts will be designed to weed out the old and bring in the new. I'm Karen Friedman, Channel 6 Action News. It didn't take police long to realize that they had another mob hit on their hands. This time it was inside this luncheonette in Grace Ferry. 
This time, the victim was 36-year-old Joey Cingolini of Cherry Hill, gunned down by three suspects. We have information that there was uh, three white males wearing ski masks, and they were last seen leaving this location. Cingolini was shot five times, three times in the head. Throughout the morning, investigators combed the area for clues, searching rooftops and talking to neighbors. But the only witness seemed to be this woman, a waitress who was inside the luncheonette when the gunman arrived. She was immediately taken to police headquarters for questioning. Investigators say the victim has strong ties to organized crime in the city. His father, Joey Chicky Cingolini Sr., is a convicted monster. Joey Jr. is suspected of being second in command to reputed local mob boss John Stampa. In fact, according to the FBI, this luncheonette is owned by the Stanford family, yet police declined comment on why Joey Jr. was a target. Well, I'm not going to speculate on what, what, what the retaliation or, or if it is a retaliation. Uh, what I'll say at this time is we're going to investigate it, we're going to see, you know, what the causes were, if we possibly can find them out, and once we get all the pieces together, then we'll let you know the story. And certainly the story extends beyond today's violence. On March 3rd, 1992, a year ago tomorrow, Joey Chinglini's brother Michael was the target of a mob hit in South Philadelphia. He was entering his home on McKean Street when shotgun blasts rang out. Michael, however, wasn't injured. Officials suspect there's a link between the attempted mob hits of both brothers. And in Brooklawn, New Jersey, this past January, the body of Mario Sonny Riccabini was found slumped in his car outside a diner. Riccabini had turned mob informant, and police speculate his murder was payback. And so tonight, investigators are not only trying to figure out who would want Joey Cinglini dead, but if this latest mob hit is a signal of a resurgence of mob violence in the city of Philadelphia. Rick Williams, Channel 6 Action News in Grace Ferry. The courthouse in Tom's River was evacuated at about 10.30 this morning after an anonymous bomb threat was phoned in. Yeah, we're moving them now. Sheriff's officers cleared out hundreds of people to make way for a bomb-sniffing dog that searched the grounds, but no device was found. The scare came just after former Scarfo crime family underboss Crazy Phil Leonetti took the stand to testify against five alleged members of the Lucchese crime family in a murder racketeering trial. Jurors were polled after the incident to see if any were concerned about continuing. All stayed on. A defense attorney denied any of the accused played a role in the bomb threat. They had absolutely nothing to gain. The defense never gains by this kind of scenario. All it does is add to the aura uh, of fear uh, that is helpful to the state in this kind of a case. When testimony finally resumed, Leonetti told the jury he attended a 1984 meeting in Atlantic City with Martin Tassetta and Thomas Riccardi, who are accused of beating Ocean County mob associate Vincent Craparata to death with golf clubs. Craparata was allegedly killed because he wouldn't cut the Lucchese crime family in on a lucrative video post poker machine business. Leonetti said Tassetta admitted the murder and told him it's better to use golf clubs than baseball bats because bats can break, but golf clubs don't break. We shouldn't believe his testimony. Defense attorneys maintain the jury can't trust Leonetti, a mobster turned government informant. He has led a life of crime. He has committed murders that are untold, uncounted. I think everybody will be able to draw their own conclusions as to uh, uh, his truthfulness. Leonetti, whom the judge would not permit us to photograph because he is a federally protected witness, will continue testifying on Thursday when the trial resumes. I'm Nora Mushanik, Channel 6 Action News, Tom's River, New Jersey.
Some came in couples. Others came in big, well-dressed groups. Police sources say they were all invited here by John Stampa, and even the kitchen workers have been told to keep it private, as Vern Odom and I found out earlier tonight. We just want to get a shot of the, di of the dining room area. Just, just five seconds. The event inside this hall, lined with barbed wire, was a benefit for alleged Stampa associate Joey Cinglini. He's been hospitalized for two months after being shot five times at his South Philadelphia restaurant. Cinglini's brother, Michael, the man on the left in the red jacket, was on the guest list. He narrowly escaped serious injury when somebody opened fire on his South Philadelphia house last March. The proprietor here downplayed tonight's event. It's a party, like if your daughter's getting married or for anybody, it's a super party. But not everybody was buying that. Parked around the hall were several cars, presumably containing either police watching the event or mobsters watching police. Yeah. Meanwhile, bystanders watched everyone. Is this like a big event around here tonight? No, yeah, we're just curious. Reporters and photographers watched too. Not that we learned much. Excuse me. Can you stop and talk to us for a second? No, no, not the same, man. What, what do you want to talk about? Let's go. Let's come on. Let's stop. Signs of the assault in the 1200 block of McKean Street in South Philadelphia were still evident today. Twisted metal, shattered glass, and boarded up windows. Last night, police say two gunmen pumped five shotgun rounds into the house, narrowly missing 29-year-old Michael Shinglini, his wife, and two children who all live here. The only sign of official business this morning was this scrap of police line, but there's plenty more going on behind the scenes. A spokesperson for the Pennsylvania Crime Commission tells me they're keeping a very close eye on what happened here last night, namely because of who the victim is. Last night's target is the son of reputed mobster Joseph Chicky Cinglini, a former Scarfo associate serving time for racketeering. The Crime Commission believes new bosses trying to take over the mob targeted Cinglini's son last night as a warning. There was a warning put forth that we know your family, we know who's involved, and if you don't get in line, these are the consequences. But Martins also says there's no evidence Michael Cinglini is even in the mob and that last night's gunmen weren't trying to kill him, but were only trying to scare some of his alleged mafia relatives. However, a U.S. attorney who helped convict Michael's father thinks otherwise. It just uh, reeks of being a, uh, a mob hit, uh, a not particularly well orchestrated one, uh, a botched one to be sure. We tried to ask Michael Cinglini what he thinks, but those in the house this morning weren't answering the door. At least not for reporters. An apparent friend got in after we tried. This is the second recent sign of mob unrest. 73-year-old Felix Bocino, a mob foot soldier, was fatally shot near his South Philadelphia home five weeks ago. There are no suspects in either case tonight, but plenty of mob-related suspicion. In South Philadelphia, David Murphy, Channel 6 Action News.
Well, all we heard was pop, 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 like a, like a, a, a firecrack, a box of firecrack is going off. Witness Al Arena described the wild scene at 6th and Catherine this afternoon. Police quickly descended on the area. They say Changlini and Merlino had just walked out of their clubhouse and were heading up Catherine when suddenly a car came up and two men in baseball caps opened fire. Both males uh, were shot with automatic weapons fire. We believe automatic weapons fire or semi-automatic weapons. Uh, one male is dead and one male is being admitted to the hospital. Changlini received multiple chest wounds and was dead on arrival at Jefferson Hospital. Police say Merlino had several wounds in his backside. He's hospitalized and reported to be in good condition. Less than two hours ago, police found a torched Ford Taurus at 19th and Johnson here in South Philadelphia. They believe it was the car used in today's mafia hit. It is a rental car from New Jersey. Michael Changlini and his family are no strangers to mafia-style violence. This is Action News videotape of Mike Changlini entering an April fundraiser for his brother, Joey Jr., who was critically wounded in what police say was a mob hit attempt back in March of this year at a Grays Ferry restaurant. Back in March of 1992, shotgun-wielding masked gunmen fired five shots into Michael Changlini's home at 12th and McKean, but no one was reported injured that night. The Pennsylvania Crime Commission says the Changlini brothers, Joey Jr. and Michael, were feuding over rival loyalties to mafia higher-ups, and today's shooting may have been in retaliation for this spring's shooting of Joey Jr. All I seen was two puffs of smoke, and that was it. Then I asked one of the officers, I said, could have been a close-range fire? He said it was machine gun. Mm -hmm. That's all he told me. So you didn't go running down there when you heard No that. way. No yeah. way. Police this afternoon combed the shooting scene at 6th and Catherine for evidence. Both Michael Changlini and Joey Merlino had well-documented mob backgrounds. FBI and police sources tell me they both had been warned months ago that there were contracts on their heads. Today's hit that killed Changlini and left Merlino wounded in the buttocks came moments after they left their 6th and Catherine clubhouse. Police say 9mm, 45 caliber, semi-automatic weapons were used and it was done in a drive-by fashion by two white males in baseball caps. We thought it was firecrackers. You That's, heard the shooting? Yeah, because my dog went nuts, but we didn't see, like, what happened. And what did you see when you ran around here? Just a lot of people running. The car the hitmen used was found later this afternoon in the 2800 block of 19th Street here in South Philadelphia. It had been set on fire. Police tell me they picked up a possible suspect seen emerging from the car moments before it was torched Michael Changlini, seen here going to an April fundraiser for his brother, was, according to law enforcement sources, feuding with his brother, Joey Jr., over rival loyalties to mob leaders. And his killing today may have been in retaliation for the shooting of Joey Jr. in March of this year. All these men were well-known figures here in South Philadelphia. Well, everybody knows uh, Michael Ciccolini. Very surprised by what happened today? I am, yeah. He never heard of anybody. Whatever he done it was his uh, business. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. He's shot in the Come on, have a party, vultures. Within the hour, Merlino's wife rushed in here by cab and was told by friends he was all right, that he had just been shot in the leg. This before a man waved the cameras off. Joey Merlino, who you see here in this photograph, according to law enforcement sources, was a big player in what's left of the Scarfo mob family. This along with his good friend and associate who was gunned down today, Michael Shangolini. Merlino is the son of Scarfo mob underboss Salvatore Merlino, who as you know is in prison on racketeering charges along with Nicky Scarfo. According to the Pennsylvania Crime Commission, John Stanza has been leading the organization, but Joey Merlino has been a burr in his side as leader of a dissident faction of the organization. 
Sources say Morlino had been involved in shakedowns as was getting a bit heavy-handed, that he had been told to back off. Right now, uniform and non-uniform police are staked out at various outposts around the hospital, standing guard in case there is another attempt on Marlino's life here at the hospital. Here we see Marlino's sister rushing into the hospital, who police had earlier identified as his wife, as she is being told not to worry, that Marlino is all right. There are a number of relatives and friends of Marlino crowded into the emergency room here at Pennsylvania Hospital. Meantime, the body of his close friend and associate, Michael Shinglini, was wheeled out of Jefferson Hospital earlier this afternoon after being pronounced dead with a gunshot wound to the head. His family members and friends were at the hospital when they got the word. There was nothing they could do to save his life. Is he aware that his good friend, uh, Michael Shinglini, is dead? I think he is. Did he say anything about that? I was extremely upset, as everyone else would be. Upset. Shinglini is seen here with Joey Merlino in a recent photograph. Morlino, as you know, is the son of Scarfo mob underboss Salvatore Morlino, who's serving time along with Nicky Scarfo for racketeering. According to the Pennsylvania Crime Commission, Morlino has been leading a dissident faction of the splintered Scarfo organization, much to the displeasure of John Stanza, who is supposed to be running things.
Joey Molino was among the first to arrive and the last to leave the viewing for his slain friend and reputed mobster, Michael Ciangolini. Molino, walking with a cane tonight, was wounded during a barrage of gunfire that killed Ciangolini as they walked together in South Philadelphia last week. Authorities believe the two, out of step with reputed mob boss John Stampa, were the target of a hit. Hundreds of people lined up outside the Cardo funeral home tonight to pay their last respects. Among those carrying condolences was Merlino's attorney, Joseph Santaguida. While he insists Merlino is not involved with the mob, he had little to say on camera tonight. Put it all in the papers tomorrow. A woman identifying herself as Cingolini's friend scoffed at any notion that he's involved in organized crime. I don't, I don't believe any of it because I knew him. But people are going to talk anyway, so mm -hmm. I think it's all crazy. Still, people crowded their steps and lined up across the street to catch a glimpse of whatever there was to see. I was just curious about about the crowd and the people and the people want to see this and they want to identify with it because it gives them a feeling of what power importance to be close to something that's happening and something that most people don't understand what the workings are what about it being so close to where you live oh uh, i don't like the idea of it but i guess i gotta live with it you know it's part of living on broad street it's kind of scary though you know huh these dudes are pretty big anyway, you know. I sure won't want to play the big boys. I won't want to play the big boys, no way. <laughs> Never. Michael Cingolini will be buried in South Jersey tomorrow morning. Meantime, the investigation into his murder continues. Denise James, Channel 6 Action News in South Philadelphia. Is there anything you can say about Mike? He's a wonderful father.
coming out here. Want to make a push, dude? No, I'll it. Notice the natural size.
Robert, do you have any comment about this morning? He's concerned regarding his son. That's the only remark that can be made. So is and who you? Son yet? I'm a fucking boss. I see it, I see it. Even if Stanfa had come, it's doubtful he'd have much to say to police. This is Stanfa yesterday, hours after his son, 23-year-old Joseph Stanfa, was shot and wounded in an apparent mob hit yesterday morning. Last night, police armed with a search warrant confiscated weapons from Stanfa's food warehouse business. John and Joseph Stanfa were passengers in a car yesterday morning. They had left their Medford, New Jersey home for the Stanfa warehouse business in the Grays Ferry section of Philadelphia. Their car was riddled with bullets, and Joseph Stanfa was hit in the face. He is hospitalized in serious but stable condition. Authorities believe John Stanfa was really the target, and that this is the latest round in the escalating mob war. You'll recall Michael Cinglini was murdered last month and Joseph Merlino wounded. They were part of a faction opposed to Stanfa's alleged mob rule. Yesterday's shooting is believed to be an act of retaliation. Thank you. 
I'll be right there. No, quick. Police say this man, Fernando Vincente, was kidnapped the night of March 19th, but Monday in court, he refused to say he was abducted. We think Vincente was intimidated by the circumstances, so he probably didn't tell exactly what happened. The facts are Vincente was leaving work at the San Marco restaurant on City Line Avenue when a red van rushed up. Vincente ended up in that van. Vincente departed in that red van so abruptly, he left his own car parked here with its engine running and lights on. A co-worker said he heard Vincente scream as he entered that red van. That co-worker, fearing the worst, ran to a nearby police officer and reported a kidnapping. According to the police, the van raced wildly northbound on city line, weaving through traffic. When police finally stopped the red van, they say they found three men, including Vincente. A loaded 38 caliber pistol, some rope, some carpeting, and some heavy-duty tape. They say that is evidence of an alleged kidnapping. Charged were 34-year-old Gary Tavella of South Philadelphia and 24-year-old Rosario Bellacci of Italy. But on the stand, Vincente repeatedly said he was confused, that he had exaggerated about being hit by the defendants. In broken English, he testified the van ride scared him, but because he had no seatbelt. Defense attorneys made much of his claim that he got into the van to talk about a past argument over a girl. They were going to discuss it, and before you know it, the police chased them and caught them. And uh, I think that, you know, it's a little unfair that I don't know why they're making out some organized crime connotations. The district justice said Vincente was not so much confused as intimidated, and he refused to throw out the case. Tavella remains free on his own recognizance. But in an effort to block a bail reduction for defendant Bellacci, the DA disclosed that Bellacci's fingerprint has turned up on a murder weapon in Camden County. Bellacci remains in jail tonight, while Camden officials said they cannot comment on anyone who has not been charged. John Rollins, Channel 6, Action News.
Clark, you need a sandwich. You sent me. The doctors uh, uh, don't want to uh, like give you a guarantee about his condition, but uh, I feel good after talking to the doctor that was in, that's in charge of the case now. No major arteries were, or veins were injured. We did uh, arteriograms with x-rays of the blood vessels, and uh, the bullets were in proximity to several large blood vessels, but none of them were injured. So there was no major blood loss. But uh, did have some pain and discomfort. Does he realize how close he came to dying? I mean, in the sense that it, a fraction of an inch could have made Well, I don't think that he thinks of it in terms of fractions of an inch, but he does realize that uh, somebody was there to kill him and that uh, it was very close that he wasn't killed. I, I would say he was kind of lucky. Nicky Scarfo Jr. is very lucky to be alive. Doctors here at Jefferson Hospital don't know exactly how many 9mm bullets ripped through his body last night. But he has at least nine bullet wounds, including one below his right ear, one in his neck, his chin, and two in his chest. Yet remarkably today, he is alert. But while Nicky Scarfo Jr. is progressing, the police say the probe into his shooting has been hampered by the fact that Scarfo will not cooperate. Yes, we have talked with him. What has he been able to tell you? Well, he too uh, referred us to his attorneys. Attorney Robert Simone said police first tried to question Scarfo as he was lying in a pool of blood. But Simone concedes even as Scarfo recovers, cooperation is doubtful. History. Simone said he was able to contact Scarfo's father, mob boss Nicky Scarfo, today to tell him his son's condition was improving. The elder Scarfo is in federal prison in Illinois. Police have little to go on. They are trying to trace his machine pistol, which was found about 100 feet from the South Philadelphia restaurant, where Scarfo Jr. was gunned down. All they know about the trigger man is that he is about 5 foot 9, thin, wore a mask, and said nothing. But while facts are scarce, theories for the shooting abound. One school of thought, the hit was ordered by members of the Gambino mob family of New York, which is now headed by this man, John Gotti. The theory is the New Yorkers are enraged that Scarfo Jr.'s cousin, Mob Lieutenant Phil Leonetti, has reportedly become a government informant and will testify against Gotti. Last night's hit has been termed a payback. The homegrown theory is that Scarfo Jr., playing the surrogate for his imprisoned father, had angered locals with an emerging arrogant style. As for those theories, police will only say... And as for the future, is last night's attack the start of something? John Rawlins, Channel 6, Action News.
The Scarfo family in happier times, celebrating the acquittal of Scarfo Sr. and his associates in the South Testa murder back in May of last year. For the family, now in obscure, faded memory. While there is relief among family members tonight that Nicky Jr. will likely pull through, his shooting is but the latest in harsh blows they have suffered. Ironically, only today, Nicky Jr.'s younger brother Mark was to go home from a New Jersey medical facility where he remains in a coma after last year's suicide attempt. Meantime, sources close to the investigation believe last night's incident was a botched assassination attempt on the life of Nicky Jr. The Mac 11 semi automatic used in the shooting, unlike some weapons, was designed for precise target hits. The type of uh, weapon that was used uh, will produce um, a lot of penetration, but not a lot of widespread tissue damage. Investigators believe the perpetrators were supposed to finish what's left of the Scarfo mob family. They're decimated here in Philadelphia because most of them are behind bars. Some of them will never get out from behind bars, including uh, Scarfo Sr. and the, the seven people that we convicted. Investigators' worst fear tonight is that New York's Gambino mob family, headed by John Gotti, which has been moving aggressively into Atlantic City real estate, is now trying to move into Philadelphia. It's possible that Philadelphia may be trying to be eliminated uh, in the, uh, the the New York, Atlantic City, Philadelphia triangle. But whoever ultimately is behind attempting to eliminate Junior and thus put the last nail in the Scarfo mob family coffin, investigators are pretty convinced of one thing. It's likely to get a lot bloodier before it's all over. I'm Dan Cuella, Channel 6 Action News, South Philadelphia. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.